Hey.
Yeah, okay. Decide whether to take one to leave the car, but
be no safe there? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs>
Bentley right next to him. Big fella.
I'm not a bit surprised. Well, I like him and Edna. He's the one that had counsel uh, send the paperwork down to be filled out to job and everything else. They asked me how I felt about it. I said, I said, it's your call. I said, you go ahead and run with it. All right. Oh, no. 
can be attached to this extra point. It'll make it nine point lead instead of just eight. Good. No television delivers the big picture quite Around like RCA. With features so advanced, you can watch TV in ways you never thought possible. With viewing and listening experiences that are quite overwhelming. Got it! After all, if we didn't push technology to new heights, we'd never be able to face the world's toughest critics day after day. RCA. Number one with the toughest critics in the world. Whole grain nutrition is important, but only one of these eating cereals has it. Only Wheaties is made with 100% whole grain. Just ask Michael Jordan. Better get your whole grain. Better eat your Wheaties. When taking pictures, it's not always convenient to move the subject. That's why Nikon's fully automatic Zoom Touch 500 zooms from wide-angle shots to close-ups. So unlike with some cameras, you won't have to move an inch. Family pressures can threaten your job. If your company doesn't help, see how it could. We have to fill their needs. Watch Peter Jennings on ABC's World News tonight, Monday. Look at Jared Bunch. He had only caught five passes coming into the ball game, but that was a big touchdown for Michigan. Callaway's going to continue in motion. Here's the tight end. He's going to release inside. He wants to go to him first, but he's covered the back right out of here. He's going to hit him right out in the flat. Good play by the quarterback, Taylor. Watch the tight end release inside. He wants to go to him. He's covered. Comes off of him very quickly to Bunch. And he runs over Clark. There's another look at it from the defensive side. Looks to his tight end. He's all over him. Gets the ball quickly out to Bunch. And that's the key. That's why the play worked, because he got him the ball quickly before he was covered by Clark. Leroy Horde is still being administered to, and it looks like it might be an ankle sprain. Well, it's more than an ankle. I know he's got oh, some ribs. We know he's got that. But, uh, 
All right, J.D. Carlson just hits it a mile high and knocks it downtown, a yard deep in the end zone. Here comes Bobby Allen. And he's cut down at the 20. It's 12-17 to go in a nine-point Michigan lead and pause here. Five seconds to allow our ABC stations to tell you who they are. Let's check in for a moment with Mike. Well, Keith, by the condition of Leroy Horde, it is not the cartilage in his ribs. It's his left ankle. Leroy says, hey, to the trainers, I can't put any weight on it. I can't put any pressure on it. They're looking at a possible sprain, an impossible break, maybe. That would be the worst-case scenario. But it's his left ankle and not his ribs. He's definitely out for the rest of the game, though. All right. Thank you. Scotty Graham, who's been the bell cow for Ohio State. That pass thrown toward Graham by Fry and uh, off target. Graham going into the line and then breaking off of the sideline. Couldn't get to it. Ohio State continues to throw on first down, which is which is the, the best way to go if you complete it. If you go incomplete, then it gets into a passing situation, and uh, that's when it's a little bit tougher to throw against Michigan's defense. Or any defense for that. Second and 10 from the 20. Graham. And Scotty will have three, maybe four, before Trip Welburn brings him down. Air Force headed for the Liberty Bowl. Boston College and Georgia Tech. Playing a close one, and Georgia Southern now has stretched out its lead to 17 points over Villanova. Look at Montana. Eddie Robinson, great Eddie. Real goal. One more game than any coach ever. Third down and seven. Underneath, Fry completes it. Jim Palmer tied in, back from injury, and first down, Ohio State at the 42. Palmer right here and the man covering is Wellborn. He's going to start across field. Wellborn's going to chase him and then he comes back this way. It's a good route if you got man coverage. Watch Wellborn. Takes, he's going across field, takes off, pushes off of him a little bit, comes back. Nobody in the area. Man to man coverage and a big first down for Ohio State. And another big injury possibility for Michigan. J.J. Grant, number 95, hobbles off the field. We've had a number of injuries, haven't we? I bet we've had seven, eight injuries yep. just in this ball game alone, and they came in banged up. Dante Lee, the tailback. Scotty Graham moves back up to fullback. Graham searches over the left side for about three, four yards. See Joe Stasniak, number 79, getting up hobbling a little bit too. It's kind of interesting to watch Stasniak when he works along the line and a play is made. He goes searching down the line for his little buddies that carried the ball and picks them up. Always there to pick him up. Yeah, he? he's the policeman. Huh? Yeah, he's always there. He, Big they, Joe. Big Joe is right. 6'5 and 290. They call him the quick tackle. Plays on the quick side. Second and seven. Little option here as Fry turns up field with it and gets to midfield, and that leaves him about three yards short of his first down. See Stasniak right in there, picking him up, toting him back. Illini putting Northwestern away now in the second quarter. Third down and three. Just moved inside 10 minutes to play in the ball game, and Michigan leading 21 to 12 over Ohio State. Play action, drive, unloads it, passes good for a first down to Scotty Graham. Graham is taken out of bounds at the Michigan 36-yard line. 
What a ball game this youngster's played. Scotty Graham, sophomore, 5'10", 225 from Long Beach, New York. Had a heck of a game last week, too, at gaining 152 yards. It's Wisconsin. Graduated from the same high school as Pete Johnson. Another pretty uh, successful fullback at Ohio State. Good play calling, though, Keith. Third and uh, medium, faked it, faked it to the tailback and snuck the fullback out in the flat. Welburn doesn't trip him. He may have scored. Welburn got a piece of him, just enough of him. And it's another first down for the we've, Buckeyes. We've been talking about Stasniak. Here he is here at the right end. He's on the weak side of the quick side. Watch him as he pulls, and Donnie Lee is going to cut right off of his block. Boy, he blocks two guys, takes him out, and the rest is uh, Lee by himself. Graham, now your tailback. First down, 22-yard line of Michigan. Graham with the ball. Down to the 16. That's about six yards. When you can get six yards on first down on the ground, well, you just keep on doing it. Well, what has happened in this game, Keys? The first half, Michigan dominated the first half. Even though they made some turnovers, they dominated. Ohio State came in and said, well, we know you're better defensively. We don't know if we can play with you. We went in halftime. They said, all right, this is the last half. Let's just go out and let it hang out. Let it all hang loose and see, see what happens. They're right in this ball game, and they believe they can win. Now, Michigan's got a, a fight on their hands. Lee and Graham behind the fry. Second down, long three. Pull back, Graham. That's the first down, just short of the 10. Yeah, the big people are now Ohio State threatening to take control of the line of scrimmage, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. Well, the other thing that is happening, the, the big offensive linemen for Ohio State are just blocking straight most of the time. Occasionally they'll pull. But the backs are doing a nice job of not hitting the hole too quickly, but reading it if, if it's not where they expect it to be, they'll slide a little bit to the right or left, and there are some gaps in there. First and 10, short of the 10-yard strike. But they can get a first down without scoring. Throwing on first down. Pass is good to Jeff Graham, and he's wrestled down at the four. Alex Marshall, the backer on that side, number 59, made the tackle. He's going to come right this way, 84, right in your screen. This is a dangerous pass. It covers a long way. You've got to be very careful. There's no defensive man sitting out there that sees the ball along with the receiver. J.J. Grant is back in. Michigan goes to a goal line defense now, taking Veda Murray out and putting another lineman in. Scotty Graham, touchdown. He's going to slide to his left. There really aren't any big holes in there. But watch the crack. He slides through. That's good defense and just good running on the part of Graham. Grant, Graham now, 27 carries, 135 yards, and two touchdowns for Ohio State. O'Morrow for the extra point. Block! Trip well born, blocked it. Well, it's not a big point at this.
this point what ends because it's uh, 21 to 18. So watch here. The man on the left side, number three, gets it this time. Trip Wellborn. He and Beta Murray. Wellborn was just named to three different All-American teams the last couple of weeks. Omaro had made 64 straight PATs, an OSU record. But Wellborn just broke it. Big miss. Today, we'll review proper tennis procedure. Let's do Never, never try to hit too hard. Avoid overexcitement. Maybe we should go through this one more time. show you all sides of the new Honda Accord, except one. You have to drive it to believe it. Trip Welburn. Big play, but trip. 21-18 ball game, 7-0-4 to play well he's made big plays all year he's intercepted passes he has blitzed in fact he has three sacks and that's the first big play he's made as far as blocking the extra point now he and McMurray uh, Beta Murray is a uh, safety a sidekick have a little uh, going argument as to who blocked some of those earlier kicks because they're right there <laughs> The SID Bruce Motti here in Michigan has given most of them to Murray, but uh, Welburn says, I, I got a couple of those. He got one today, and it was a big one. O'Mara to kick it off now with Howard and uh, Jefferson deep. That's a very short kick. And Greg McMurtry fair catches the kickoff at the 31 yard line. Couldn't afford to let it bounce. And McMurray was standing there, so he just fair caught it. And you certainly can do that. You can fair catch any kick before it hits, it hits the ground. So look at uh, Michigan and their running tendencies, left, middle, and right. And the yardage doing much better to the right and left than they are up the middle. All right, in the last series, the Ohio State defense was just flying all over the place. No bowls and no horde now. And both gone. Jared Punch takes a hit from Tovar, who's been a dynamite defender here in the second half for the Buckeyes. And there just isn't anything there. He looks like he's banged up. Yeah, he got up. Uh, this is another inside linebacker hurt for Ohio State. As Sam would say, he's got a hitch in his get along. Judah Herman's going to come back now. He's dinged up too, remember. He's been out. Eisenman, number 10 in there with a broken thumb. Bunch of game kids out there playing football. Tovar, 12 tackles as he leaves. I expect he'll be back. Clock rolling, 6.40. Second and eight. Michael Taylor got loose for a moment. And that's a good defensive play by Judah Herman, the sophomore. Just come back into the ball game, and he saw the quarterback about to slip away and got him. So it will be third and eight for Michigan. Weren't with us earlier in the ball game. We mentioned the fact that Ohio State is playing without four starters defensively, all out with injuries for the year. Eisenman was a question mark coming in, and uh, Herman was hurt earlier in the ball game. Now he's back.
Baylor's pass to punch. Good for a first down. Michael Taylor made that play. No question about it. Michael Taylor made the play. He isn't the prettiest, but he's the most efficient, and that's why Schembechler likes to have Michael Taylor in there. First of all, he's a fifth-year senior, very intelligent player. Led the Big Ten in passing last year, passing efficiency. is number two this year. Makes very few mistakes. 42-yard line now. They got four more snaps and five pointed to play, leading by three points. Allen Jefferson will pick up three yards. Ken Colvin, a junior from Dayton, 92, the tackle for the Buckeyes. Steve Everett, number 51, against Thomas, 54, in the middle of that line. Kind of a standoff there. Thomas got over and got a piece of the tackle. Everett is an outstanding uh, center. Just playing in his first year. He's a redshirt freshman. Second out and six. Jefferson taken down by Eisenman. Derek Eisenman, the senior from Fremont, Ohio. Watch Eisenman here. Was not expected to play. Came into the game with a broken thumb. Runs right through a slow developing play. Doring from the left side was pulling across. Eisenman read it, ran through the opening in the line, and made a uh, tackle for a loss. They call that a Big Ten college football behind the line of scrimmage. Got another third and long now. Third and eight. Oh, oh my goodness. That Taylor made the play the last time. This time Taylor did not make the play because Greg McMurtry was slanting at full speed and wide open, full throttle, and Taylor missed it. Threw it behind him. McMurtry was. He might have broken that thing. Yeah, no, no question. He's got the speed to do it. You have to throw that ball between the linebackers at the line of scrimmage. And he was trying to get it through there when he had an opening. One of the linebackers was coming over, and he tried to get it through there. Threw it behind him. Well, Stapleton in the putt. Been a shaky exercise all day, but he got a little bit on this one at the 20-yard line taken by Bobby Olive. And Olive will come on back up to the 30. 334. 35 yard punt and a 14 yard return. And Todd Plate is shaken up on the play for Michigan. the U.S. Armed Forces to get high-tech training could be the best move of your life. Opportunity is waiting for you, for you, for you. In the U.S. Armed Forces. Fiber that's pound for pound, five times stronger than steel, and is used in this bullet-resistant vest, makes up the unique belt of Road Handler Treadlock Radials. Great low prices, Road Handler Tough. That's your money's worth and a whole lot more. Now, almost every time you use MasterCard before December 31st, you increase your chances of winning your MasterCard bills paid up to $18,000 a year till the 21st century. MasterCard. Master the moment until the 21st century. The hard-hitting giants teach a crash course on pain, but the San Francisco 49ers are in a class of their own. They meet on ABC's Monday Night Football. Todd Plate. Shake it up on the kick coverage. Let's come off the field for a moment. He's a starting corner. In fact, he's playing for the injured uh, Lance Dotton. Plate was a walk-on a couple years ago. He's earned a scholarship at Michigan. Dwayne Ware, number eight, a redshirt freshman from Bloomington, Illinois, goes into the ball game now for Michigan. Both teams have just absorbed tremendous number of injuries there's where see if they continue to throw on first down 
If they do, they'll probably go right at him. Nope. Give it to Scotty Graham. And he's caught behind the line of scrimmage for a three-yard loss. And it was Eric Anderson with the first hit on him. Anderson, number 37. Anderson made a nice play. Watch as he plays off the block of the running back, steps in, fills the hole. That's Dante Lee. That's one of the things that people like, well, why, don't, why doesn't Lee play all the time? He can run fast, he's quick. The problem is he doesn't block as well, and he doesn't all, all the time, the, the new people understand the offense and get the checkoffs when they occur at the line of scrimmage. Good Second example. and 12. Good example right there. Price pass for Beatty. Intercepted by Plate, who had just come back into the ball game. Todd Plate had just come back. And he comes up with a tremendous interception, and Vader Murray is now hurt on the field. Murray actually ran into Plate after the interception. You know, this has been a hard-hitting, physical, tough ball game, but you don't expect it from your own uh, player. To the right side of your screen, no, to the left side, excuse me, Plate's just going to cut in front of the receiver and makes a great interception, and right there, Murray was looking to block on Graham and didn't think he was going to have uh, contact with Plate, and it looked like he may have hurt his shoulder. The way they hit together, it looks like it. Yeah. Greg Fry suffering with that play, obviously, and time is out for Veda Murray. Better send some money, Val. They say I need a root canal. I'm calling about your band, Putrid Rage. You better send money. They're trashing my stage. Dad, is there any way you could send the money today? To send someone money fast, come to Western Union. We'll make sure it gets to any of our 13,000 locations, usually in 15 minutes or less. Keep in touch. Western Union, the fastest way to send money. Later in Springfield, Massachusetts, the 11th Annual Hall of Fame Tip-Off Classic. I'm Gary Bender, along with Dick Vitale. We'll get to see one of the great guards in the country, Ramil Robinson. He's a dominating kind of guard. Mr. Excitement. It should be an enthusiastic game. Michigan and Arizona. Let's go back to Keith. Time is still out for Veda Murray now. There's uh, medical people all over the place. They brought a stretcher out. Uh, normally, when you see this kind of uh, precaution, it has to do with the neck. Here's Murray right here. Here's Murray right here. The collision is going to happen after the ball is caught. Plate makes the catch. He's bent back. It looks like he goes out. No, he looks up a little bit. Didn't get hit in his head or his neck, it didn't seem. It looked like it was a shoulder or possibly from being bent back. Maybe he hurt one of his lower legs, but it looked to me like it was a shoulder or something. They have knocked him out, too. Well, he has not moved, that I could tell. I mean, apparently they've been able to talk to him. But his uh, legs have not moved. There's a paramedic, a pair of paramedics out there with the doctors. Well, I think they may, they may think it's a neck injury. It doesn't seem like that from, from the collision that we saw. If anything, I think it may have just knocked him out. Well, it doesn't do any good to speculate. No, Bo doesn't. obviously is out there. Yeah. The medical people are out there. John Cooper has come out on the field now. Everybody is concerned about Veda Murray, who is one of the outstanding young people playing this game in this country. 
twists his lower back, but uh, you know, usually when you have a serious injury to the neck or something like that, you, you, it's because you have a straight on impact with your helmet and your neck is usually down. I don't know, it just it's, it appears to me that he just got knocked out and they can't, uh, because he's turned over on his, uh, on his stomach, they really can't get in there to, to talk to him or see what the problem is. They don't want to move him because for obvious reasons. They have now managed to get the stretcher under him. They're going to take him off. Oh, I hate to see this. Take a look at it from another angle. See the left shoulder of uh, plate hit him on the face mask. Here, it snapped his head back some. The most important thing here at this particular juncture is to get him somewhere where he can be taken care of. You have these the frightening uh, thoughts come tumbling through your mind when you're looking at a circumstance like this. I don't want to get deep into speculation on it because if as Bob says it's just a momentary uh, thing that's one thing. So time is still out for Veda Murray. Michigan leading 21 to 18. Whenever I used to watch TV, my brother Tom would always flip me out. Then we got this Magnavox smart window TV that lets Tommy flip through all the channels. And I could keep watching what I want to. Now I can see what I've been missing, and that's quite a lot. Xerox presents the Great American Torture Test. We challenge the bone-numbing cold of northern Alaska and passed with flying colors. Xerox, because extreme conditions demand extreme protection. We continue to wait for Veda Murray. Being very, very deliberate. Don't just arbitrarily go out and start rolling people around. At the conclusion of today's game, we'll select our Chevrolet most valuable players from each of the teams. It'll be the 19th year that Chevrolet has participated in its scholarship program with $1,000 being donated to the general scholarship fund of each of the schools. We have two minutes and 48 seconds to play in this 86th meeting between Ohio State and Michigan. The Michigan Wolverines are leading 21 to 18. And you can see him uh, blinking his eyes and, and conversing with those around him. <clears throat> but they're not going to take any chances. They're going to uh, spirit him off the field in a big hurry and uh, Keep all the medical attention necessary on him to ascertain his condition. It's a good thing these two teams only play each other once a year. Well, I mean, they flat wear each other out. They're so determined I mean, about things. We hope that uh, Veda is not seriously injured, and, and I think the, the the length of time that it's taken to get him off the field doesn't necessarily mean that he is seriously injured no, either. No, no. It's just a precaution. Right. You know, we've seen this happen before where it's a precautionary thing and they get them to the hospital, check them out, and it's just uh, something uh, a lot less serious than, you know, what you think of at the worst.
We will follow the condition of uh, Beta Murray until we know. And we'll have reports for you during the Arizona Michigan basketball game, which will follow at 4 o'clock. All right, it's first down right here for Michigan. 21 18. And the ball is handed to Alan Jefferson, and Alan Jefferson is taken down by Derek Eisenman, number 10. Well, that's Greg Fry holding his head in the aftermath of uh, the interception and the Murray injury. Ohio State has just called a timeout that is the second timeout. Now it is the first time out of the second half for Ohio State so they have two remaining at two minutes and thirty nine seconds and uh, that play gaining nothing so Michigan is now looking at second down and ten and obviously with the first down would get another four snaps and that would put Ohio State that give a pretty good sized problem to bring you up to date if you've just joined us in the first quarter. After a turnover, Michigan got on the board to lead 7 0 as Horde, who is out of the game, hurt now, scored. In the second quarter, he went to 14 0 as Jefferson scored from the two. Then O'Moro kicked a field goal to put Illinois on the scoreboard, but that came after the, uh, I mean, Illinois, on Ohio State on the scoreboard. That came after the Buckeyes were inside the five, first and goal, and had to settle for three. Then the third quarter, another field goal, and then uh, the rest of it you can see. Graham making it close at 21 to 18. Scotty Graham has had a huge day for Ohio State. Michael Taylor pitches it back. Alan Jefferson turns it upfield, runs back into the middle, and gets up across the 46 yard line. And there he is stopped. So you're looking at third down. Third and close to five. Jefferson has come a long way. As a sophomore, he broke his uh, leg. He came back after the. Uh, after the break continued to had some pain the pain continued to uh, practice anyway finally uh, the pain was so severe he had it checked out had some surgery to do and discovered there was a calcium deposit the size they said of a golf ball and when Schembechler found out how big and how painful that uh, was he went immediately went over to the hospital and said kid you are a, a one tough kid to play with that on third and five Taylor throws pass over the head of the intended receiver. However, a penalty flag is thrown. Benny Clark, number seven, defending against Desmond Howard, and Clark made the mistake, I think, of putting his arm out. That's what got him in trouble. Pass interference against Ohio State. John Cooper wants a second opinion. Well, he's not going to get it. Watch the right side of the screen as they'll come into the picture. Yeah, he's got his hand out. He hadn't stuck that hand out. He might have gotten away with it, huh? Yep. All right, a quick moment with Mike Adam Lee. Well, Keith, Veda Murray was just uh, left the stadium. He was taken to the hospital in an ambulance. The good news is that he had movement in his hands and in his feet. Uh, the reason that the doctors are sending via sending him to the hospital via ambulance as Veda did complain of some pains in his neck. So right now, it's just a precautionary thing taking him to the hospital. But again, the good news is that there was no paralysis in his arms or his legs. All right, John Cooper raging on the sidelines now, absolutely convinced he got a bad call. He wanted a second opinion and couldn't get it. And it's first down Michigan at the Ohio State 40. Jefferson for about three yards, maybe four, four yards. And now Michigan is called, no, they're going to go the other way with it. It's Ohio State calling the timeout. He pointed to Michigan, but then turned around and changed it. So the Buckeyes have one timeout remaining. Illinois blowing Northwestern away now in the second quarter. They've got to have some help, however, from Ohio State. And Michigan right now, with a minute and 44 seconds to play in the game, is leading 21 to 18. But they have the ball, second down, and about seven on the Ohio State side of the field. A 
Let's go back and take a look at that interference. Here are the two players involved up here. Now watch as he comes down and breaks to the inside. Clark, number seven, in the white jersey, will put his hand out and kind of shove him inside. That's a foul. It's a good call. And the reason he did that, it wasn't a zone. He didn't have a lot of help from linebackers inside. When the man broke across his face, he knew that he was by himself, and he didn't want to give up the big play. You think that was a catchable ball? I think it would have been if he hadn't have been shoved to the okay. inside. Okay. He hadn't have been knocked off his route. And yep. Too close to, uh, to determine if it wasn't. All right, second down and seven for the Wolverines. Alan Jefferson, defense after.